As always, it was a great event. I hope that uh, we can do that in the future. I think it was good for a lot of families. Uh, you know, brought back a lot of memories, walked away with a lot of earworms, you know, parts of songs you remember, you can't get rid of for until the next, you know. Uh, but it was great. And it was also great to see our council members there, you know, supporting the event. So I just wanted to come by and thank everybody for uh, doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other citizen comments at this time? Anybody on the phone? Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on to announcements and reports, city staff announcements and reports. Do we have anybody here today, tonight, reporting? Mr. Mayor. Let's go first. Um, Mr. Mayor. I just oh, yes. Know when we it. Oh. They're telling me that YouTube is not working right now. Okay. Let's pause for a second real quick. We were taking a short recess to see what the issue with the YouTube channel feed us. Are we good now? Yeah, okay. All right, sounds like we're good now, Chief. Evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, just a few things for you today from the police department. Uh, earlier today, I had the opportunity to meet with the Livingston Pentecost organization in preparation for the upcoming FESTA. Uh, just so everyone's aware and has the information on July 2nd, uh, they'll be starting off their festivities with a dance from 8 p.m. to 12 midnight. And then on the 3rd, uh, they'll have their parade and we're gonna have street closures at Park and Main uh, involving J Street, P Prusso, I Street, and then back over to Main across the overpass uh, to the Catholic Church. I'll be bringing in extra staff to make sure that that's accommodated and take care taken care of, and the parade uh, participants are uh, safe. Uh, also on the third, they're gonna be having another dance from 8 p.m. to midnight. I believe there's a dinner being served at 7 p.m. that's uh, open to the public. Also, uh, in regards to the 4th of July, we're gonna be stepping up enforcement action, so we'll be bringing in extra people for that holiday Monday uh, to make sure that everything goes uh, the way it's supposed to in the city. And then earlier today, uh, I posted on the police department's uh, social media website a link to sign up for Everbridge uh, emergency notifications. That's something that the city received from the county a couple of years ago for free. We have access to it at the police department and it's an easy way to keep people informed of critical information that they need throughout the city. So uh, if everyone could pass that along, you have to sign up for it to get the notifications. You can choose whether you get them through email, uh, cell phone, text messages, or you can actually get a voice phone call uh, if you wanna listen to a robot talk to you. Um, that's all I have. Any questions? Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. Uh, Council, any questions for the Chief? Uh, yes. Real quick, and, and thank you for doing that. I, I know that was, um, w we met earlier today about the uh, uh, emergency preparedness, and that, that is one thing that came up, and, you know, it's good to find out that we have, that's a resource that we have available already in place, and just in case of a, a real emergency. I know that, that other other agencies, other municipalities don't have all those resources and, and thankfully we're, we're not like up in the hills and we're, we're a lot of other uh, cities or towns have that high risk of uh, fires. So it's it, it was a really good conversation uh, that we had today and, and that was it, it was good to find that out. One question that I had, and and, uh, uh, and I appreciate you keeping us informed of uh, and, and updated about the, uh, but people keep on asking me about uh, the shooting on Saturday night or Correct. Sunday. Yes. Uh, I, and I know there's it's very limited to what you can be able to share. Can you just give us an update? And, and Absolutely. So uh, uh, early Saturday morning, uh, 
I guess most people would call it Friday night, but about 3.45 a.m. on Saturday morning, uh, there was a shooting at the little gals and little boys and gals field at the Sergeant Aguilar Park. Um, we have leads on it. Detectives are pursuing them vigorously. Uh, we should have some resolution to it in the, in the coming days. Um, at this point, I can't say whether it was gang related or not. It doesn't appear to be, but it, it's too early to say that. Um, but the victim in, in that case uh, survived his injuries. Uh, he was airlifted to a Modesto area hospital and was released a few hours later. And that's pretty much all I can say at this point. Uh, and then going back real quick to the uh, meeting that we had earlier on the emergency uh, operations plan that, that we have, and it was constructed back in 2003. Uh, it's a good plan. Uh, it seems that there were a lot of resources and money that were put into putting it together, but it does need to be updated. And uh, time permitting, I think it would be a good idea to meet with each one of you because little did I know, uh, in the event of an emergency, each one of you guys do have a role in making sure that the city continues to operate. So that's it. Uh, uh, just real quick, just real quick. I haven't, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to ask this question. And just for an update to the community, because, you know, so that they know that we're, we're doing something about it, uh, there's been concerns and this is like the third time and I just keep on forgetting sometimes uh, to bring that this up in regards to uh, uh, recreational vehicles or, or trailer homes uh, in in spaces that are not um, allowed uh, can you give us an update on, on or, or just a brief on what is allowed and what is not? Yeah, so there's, there's a, a standing city ordinance about recreational vehicles, and it basically says you, there's no place in the city where you can camp. And if you're living or staying in a, an RV, you're considered camping according to the ordinance, and we can take enforcement action there. Obviously, we would rather go the educational route rather than find people and give them citations. So we usually give them a certain amount of time to remedy the, the issue. Uh, before we do that, but you can't live in an RV, you can't stay in an RV. I, I think there's like a three-day limit, don't quote me on that. I, I want to say it's like three days, like if you have visitors coming to your house from out of town, it can be parked out in front of your house for three days, but after that it's considered you're living in it, you're camping. And for questions related to that, the uh, department to call will be PD, right? I mean, Correct. 394-7916. Um, they can pass you off to one of the officers on duty. It may be a question that the dispatcher can answer, or they can forward you. To, uh, they can be forwarded to me, and, and I can answer those. And then you keep reminding me of things that I forgot. We have National Night Out scheduled for August 2nd, uh, so we'll be putting uh, festivities and stuff together. Uh, what we're going to try to do during National Night Out is try to organize a taco truck contest and have all the taco trucks from the community uh, in the, the involved with the event, and then I'll talk to you guys about it later, but I'd like you guys to be the judges. Be free talk. Anybody you. else, any other questions? You guys good? Um, just real quick, thanks for uh, <clears throat> being involved in emergency preparedness. I think that's very important. Um, I, you know, beyond emergency preparedness, I think it's important to look at the community, community risk assessment and community risk reduction models. I mean, there's a fire thing. I know that fire plays a role in, in emergency preparedness, uh, but looking forward to working with you in regards to uh, updating our plans and our response and prevention as well. So um, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. You got it. Anything else? Vanessa, anybody else? Yes, our recreation department has a report for you tonight. Good evening, Mayor, Council, staff. Um, I gave you guys a copy of this as well, so you guys have it for dates and whatnot. Filling in for Jackie tonight. She's at Vacation Bible School, so you guys get me tonight. So just going to give you a report on the centennial. The University of California, Merced, is going to be doing their second round of interviews in August. So if you know any longtime re Livingston residents, 
that we should have interviewed the first time, please give the department a call with their contact information and we'll be doing that and scheduling that as well as we did last time. The Chronicle should be ready any day online use. We, Jackie had a meeting with them and so we're just waiting for the final round of that to come online. Centennial shirt orders are coming in if you want your name on the shirt or you just want to order a shirt, you can come into City Hall, we'll get you all set up. It's $25 to sponsor. And then if you buy your shirt at that time, it's $10, and then each additional shirt is 12. The deadline is July 15th, so the quicker we get those in, so we get the shirts back in enough time for the centennial events. Classes. Uh, Bangara will be starting back up July Thursday, July 7th. We are taking signups. Class is filling up quickly. Uh, Miss Anita is really excited to start another class. Summer Ballet will start July 6th. It will run for six weeks before we start our regular session in September. Karate is an ongoing class. You can still sign up for that. We're always looking for new instructors uh, with a special skill. So if you think you'd like to teach a class, give me a call at the office, 394-8830. And as uh, Mr. Samara had said, our spring concert had come to an end. Uh, it was last night. It was a great success, even though we had a few hiccups at the end. Um, we are looking forward to next year. We want to thank Mr. Russ Witten for all his hard work. He's gone out and got sponsors, got all of our local talent to come out. All the bands that play are local residents or alumni. So please support them and their art. And we could not have done this out without Mr. Witten. He was up dil diligently until 2 a.m. finding us a replacement band. So he does work hard and he is invested in this particular program. So we uh, give him a great big round of applause. And youth soccer. Our last soccer registration is July 9th. It's a Saturday from 9 to noon. It'll be at City Hall. We are already above our average for registration. So we're still in need of coaches as always, but if you'd like to coach or have any questions, you can still give us a call at the office, but the last registration date is Saturday, July 9th. Safe and Sane Fireworks. Safe and Sane Fireworks booth opened up July, I'm sorry, June 27th at noon and will operate until midnight on July 4th. Locations are the Youth Football at Maine and Campbell, LHS Bamboosters and Parent Club, is at the Liberty Plaza in front of Chicago Pizza, and the Livingston Apostolic Church will be at Rancho San Miguel in the parking lot. The Safe and Sane Fireworks demonstration is gonna be July 1st, that's a Friday night. It's at 8.30, Phantom Fireworks, the Safe and Sane Fireworks Company will be having a free exhibition of their best sellers, new items for 2022 at the Alvarez Ball Field. The Youth Hispanic Leadership Club from LHS will be selling snow cones for a dollar, and the PTO from LMS will be selling hot dogs and drinks. Just bring a long chair. We plan on doing it um, at Pitcher's Mound and everybody kind of sitting around and enjoying that. They've been doing this now, um, minus COVID. This is, I think, their fourth year they've come out and done this for us. So Megan is our rep here, and she does a great job. She offered to do this about four years ago and loved it and keeps doing it for us. I think we're one of the only towns that get to have this. So we thank Phantom Fireworks for that. The gates at Alvernez will open up at 8 p.m. If you don't bring a lawn chair, you are more than welcome to sit in the bleachers. <sighs> Sorry, there's a lot going on. Adult sports. Summer co-ed does start this Friday night at Little Guys and Gals Field. We do have six teams that will be playing. Games will start at 6.30 due to the heat, but everybody's welcome to come out and watch. Sweet Potato Festival 2022. We are now accepting vendors for our 2022 Sweet Potato Festival. Come by City Hall or call the Recreation Office or we can mail or email you an application. We're also looking for sponsors, so if you have a business and would like to make a tax deductible donation, please call the Recreation Office, again, 394-8830. Carnival tickets will go on sale August 1st at City Hall. Thanks to Chief, we do have another circuit, um, circus another carnival coming in. So last but not least, the Livingston, the city of Livingston is cordially inviting you to be part of our completion day. Thursday, July 21st, 2022 at the corner of D and 6th Street, LFA will be turning over the keys to our building. 
If the council has any dignitaries they would like to invite to this historical event, please let us know by Monday, June 27th. We will be sending out official invites on June 28th. And for a lot of you guys that don't know this, this has been an ongoing project, super excited. Uh, Jackie will never take credit, but I will give her all the credit with her and Gabriel and Jose Ramirez. They were able to get us this building, not drop the ball, and see it through, through all the rounds of negotiations for the grant. So, excited and going to bring lots of new things to Livingston and be able to offer more opportunities for the kids. And then our Park and Rec Commission meeting is going to be this Thursday at 6 p.m. We will have our new commissioners coming in. So if you guys haven't had a chance to meet them and you would like to, please come to the meeting at 6 p.m. on Thursday and get to know some of the new rec commissioners. I am finally done. <laughs> any questions? Council, any questions? Do you have any updates on the 4th of July fireworks show? Did you guys contact any companies yet? I'll give you again. I'll give you an update. Oh, you got the update? It, yeah, that's a, a long process, and and our department actually hasn't done it in a few no. years. I usually assist in that, and I didn't find out about it until last week. Yeah, that's a uh, the Fourth of July committee usually. It usually that. is the Fourth of July committee, and I usually work with them on that. But any other it? questions, Council? Uh, yes. Um, Let's see, with, uh, uh, just remind people with, uh, with those t-shirts, those uh, sponsored shirts, mm -hmm. there's an extra cost for bigger sizes, right? Yes, Mr. Moran, I know I had to charge <laughs> Mr. Moran a few dollars more. It's okay. Three dollars. Only two, don't add. Two? Okay. <laughs> I so take everybody's okay. money, but let's right. not so give me extra. That's my bad. It's only two dollars for the larger sizes, so. When you go buy one, just keep that in mind. It's not $10, but $12, right? It is, it. yes, and it's on the uh, form as well, yeah. just in case you forget. Okay. <laughs> and uh, um, for the um, last but not least, uh, what time is that going to be? Is, is there a time for, for the event uh, on Thursday, July 21st? Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't put the time in. It'll be at 7 p.m. I apologize. Okay. Yes, it'll be at 7 p.m. And we're going to have the before pictures, uh, what the old LFA used to look like, and then we'll have what we have proposed that the public gave input for to see come into uh, reality. Thank you for that. And um, um, any updates on, on the barber shop? I know that, that uh, during conversations, during uh, recreation, commission meetings uh, was to eventually hopefully try and clean that up and possibly paint it and fix it up and have it ready for uh, activities for yes and I uh, believe Vanessa uh, will yes I'll take address that. that thank you oh okay all right um, yes um, staff is looking at the options of using this um, uh, vacant space uh, city facility for um, recreation programs and youth and senior programs. However, we will be um, we will be bringing an item forward to council in the future to uh, request approval for for us to move forward with that. For us to move forward, as to use it for. That's, yes, that's correct. Uh, to use it for uh, the for to hold recreation. Uh, classes or events and um, also to do some um, the improvements that we are planning to do um, we've gotten a quote and, um, and and it's over a, the certain threshold that that it, it requires for us to bring it to council as well so we will be bringing that item forward is there an idea the time frame um, we will um, try to bring this over in mid-July. Yes, it'll be for our recreation classes, our bangra and other things like that, and our karate and hopefully ballet. And it's just a little more conducive for um, the kids, the parents, it's a great space. And so hopefully you guys have be able to take a look at that and we can bring you more information. Council, any other questions? Thank you. On the Safe and Sane Fireworks booth, if you can, Recheck the date for June 27th. Monday? Yes. Yes. 
it is Monday. They actually are getting their inspections on Monday. It can open up at noon. Okay, so... It's gonna, usually one week prior to the 4th of which July. Which would have been the 28th. I don't have a calendar in front of me. I believe Monday... Did anybody have their calendar in front of them? It's a seven-day opening. So I don't know. Seven-day, Monday to Marshall, Monday. Let me know because we tried to open on the 27th at one time because it was presented to us on a certificate. Mm -hmm. And it was incorrect. So if you can double check for me, that would be great. If not, we'll open on the 27th, just like your paperwork says. Is Monday the 27th? Monday so is the 27th. It's seven days, so it's Monday to Monday, because some the 4th of July falls on a Monday. So I apologized in the past that that had happened, um, but when we met with the fire department for the inspection, uh, the 27th, there's three scheduled times, and then they can open up by noon. They'll close by midnight on the 4th. You're welcome. Thank you, Tony. Any other staff reports? No other staff reports, Mayor. All right, thank you. Uh, city, ma city manager announcements and reports? Yes, um, and really quick, Mayor, I did want to share that um, our streaming is not working. Our I, technician just made, made us aware of that, and I have put in a phone call to our um, IT department, they did run a systems check this afternoon, um, and, and what they um, shared with us is that it seems that it, the internet was working, however, they are checking at the moment to see if there is an outage. Um, what if we have been, what if it's been shared with us as well is that even though we may have internet in the area, it will default, when there is an outage from Frontier, it will default to a slower um, carrier and it does not support our YouTube channel to stream, unfortunately. Um, what uh, we will also be doing, and this is um, from our IT department, we are going to look into having a, um, a dedicated internet line for um, our council chamber so that way we will have, we won't be sharing the, the wavelength of this um, internet um, in the future. Um, and we can and we can potentially um, avoid or anticipate some of these issues. Excuse me, um, and I'm the least technical of anybody in the room. Uh, yeah. Are people still able to participate? We have them participating over our phone, our open line. Okay. However, they are not able to see us through YouTube streaming services okay. at the moment. But um, our technician is recording the meeting at the moment, so this will be uploaded um, to the city's website uh, once we are completed. Thank you. Thank you. I also had complaints, Vanessa, that even though people are on the line, they aren't let in to, to hear or to speak. They have um, background music playing mm -hmm. and aren't able to participate. I've had that said to me from three different people. We have a dedicated line for our city, so, and it's controlled through our, our, our board and our deputy city clerk. So we will check into that as well. Thank you. I'm on the line, I hear you, I hear you guys, um, good. I don't have any background. Yeah, is that yeah. Garcia? I, I do believe yeah, sure. we were having some issues the last time when we were trying to do the Zoom meeting and with Zoom, you have to let people in in order to participate. And if someone, someone is not monitoring um, the the room in Zoom, it, it becomes a little problematic in order to um, let people into the meeting to participate. But uh, that was but a one instance with Zoom. Um, this is a dedicated line that the city pays for this service. Um, so with that, our IT system is gonna look into having a dedicated internet service just for the council chambers um, going forward. I wanted to report that, and um, the the uh, the meeting is being recorded, and it will be posted on our YouTube uh, our YouTube uh, page and our website as well. Um, I also um, 
During our last meeting, I shared that um, we were gonna have a report from our public works department, our public works and fire um, captain, they're out of the office tonight. So they will be bringing a uh, report on stats and update with city projects in our next meeting. However, I did wanted to share that one of our big projects that our public works department has been working on, which is the sewer replacement project has been completed and we are working with our engineering department to do our final walkthrough with uh, the proper agencies and to bring back to council the acceptance of, of that project as well. Um, Tony did share a little bit. We are doing a ceremony with the LFA with passing of the keys. Um, but I did also share with council that escrow closed last Friday. So that was uh, very exciting for the city. Uh, we have completed the purchase of the LFA building. Now um, the new the, the home of the new recreation center and we will be moving forward with um, with the ceremony to um, to 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 have uh, an opportunity for our residents and our um, electeds and and city staff in our community to um, to to take part of this um, of this process and this project from the beginning. Um, last but not least, I did wanted to share that back in April, the city um, the city council approved um, the resuming with the water disconnection services for delinquent accounts and that would be taking place starting July 2022 so we next month in July we will be um, we will be resuming this um, this process within our public works department for for all delinquent uh, utility accounts that do not have a current um, payment plan in place and that's all I have for our, my report. Thank you, Vanessa. Any questions for Vanessa Council? I have a question. Go ahead. On, uh, on F Street, after they did the new pavement, they have yellow double solid lines. I'm yeah. sorry, on M Street? On F Street. Okay. Mario, I don't know if you could answer that or, or Vanessa, because oh. I have a few, Thank few you, residents Mario. that actually complain about that because there were never solid lines there. Yeah, that, that says design, I'm pretty sure, and that, that's a collector, so you can have double lines on that. that if anything, will s the intent is to slow people down a little bit. There's a visual barrier there. You can turn, uh, if you live and you need to go over those, you can go over those lines. So there's really no, not a lot of downside to it that I can see. Any other questions? Uh, yes, so um, is there a way? So we have Frontier for internet service. Thank you, Mark. Is, is there a way to consider another service provider? Frontier is the servicer for the city uh, at this moment, the main servicer. Okay, so does that mean that can we still consider another option or is there a contract that we, that it goes to like at a certain date or we can have, or? We don't have a contract. They are normally the, the main servicer for a, a, a territory, so Frontier, it's our default carrier. Uh, what we are looking, and this is just not for the city, for, for city chamber, city council chambers, but we're looking also is to switch from the regular, the regular Wi, not Wi-Fi, but internet service to fiberglass, which is something more reliable and more um, and, and, and faster. But um, that that is something that we have a project going on at the moment, what we are going to do is have a dedicated line and, and, and look for um, fiberglass option so that way we have something that, it's, that, that is reliable, that it's fast, and that it will, um, it, it, it will, it, it will um, let us do the streaming. Okay. Um, 
I'd like to eventually hopefully see options because we cannot continue. I mean, it's, yeah. not, it's not something that we should be having every two weeks, um, you know, um, even though it's good that we have uh, other ways for, for um, residents to participate uh, by calling, but it's, it's, it's definitely something that we, or the city invested, I, I believe it was 80 some thousand dollars in this project to be able to facilitate and make it easier and, and all that. So, but if we don't have internet access, then it makes it. Absolutely. And um, it, it, it is definitely something that we will, that even our IT uh, personnel that's working on it, they already have a ticket put in, in place to start working and this will be a priority. And also um, the fact that we do have that very expensive equipment, it's what it's letting us record the meeting right now and be able to upload it. So we have that option available today. All right. So let me just kind of go back a little bit real quick because I don't want to keep that question in my mind. That's okay. So, and I understand how some areas are, there's some services that are available and some areas that are not. Um, would that be the case to where, where we're at right now? Other, other providers are not available. And then we have to go with Frontier. My case. understanding is that they own the territory for, for Livingston. So they are the service, the internet service provider for Livingston. Uh, what we are looking at, it's doing the, um, doing an upgrade and instead of getting the regular internet, we're gonna have faster service with the fiberglass. It is more expensive, but, um, but it, we need to have reliable service here uh, for our public safety, public, uh, public works departments, and we are looking at doing a change into fiberglass as a citywide, but what we're gonna look as a uh, fix for the council chambers is to have a dedicated internet line so it could use it for streaming and it's not sharing that space with any other device um, when we have these meetings. Okay. I understand that. So now this brings me to my next, and this is probably that I have to do on my own, or hopefully if, if we can have, somehow have this conversation to why we're, you know, and, and, and probably I understand how wide this problem is, but we shouldn't, and especially if we have that problem, residents have that problem. So our residents should not be going, no one should be going through this right now, especially Hopefully we paid the bills, so you know. So right. that that is not the case. But anyways, thank you. No, thank you. All right, and um, um, you also mentioned the water disconnect is going to start in July. Has there been a a better response in regards to residents who have responded to our program in regards to having a payment plan so that this doesn't happen? Um. I believe, and I will have to bring back that information on how many people we have um, effectively put on payment plans. I do, um, I do know that our counter uh, office, our utility office, it's a really busy office um, that, it, that it takes and provides this information to our customers when they walk in, and we are very proactive to try to uh, work with everyone that has a delinquent balance in order to, um, in order to give them these options. Um, at the same time, we, um, we were just notified that the second program that, that we had submitted an application for, which is um, a, a state program that will provide relief for uh, delinquent um, accounts, we have been approved. Um, we, we just got that uh, information today, so we will be bringing back um, more information as to the amount of the, um, the grant that we were approved to provide relief to our residents. Okay. Um, actually, and, and then again, I don't even know, but this question, I, so I don't know who the question is for in regards to the fireworks update, is that? Yeah, I'll do it under my report. Okay, all right. Um, uh, 
Okay, I think... I do believe those are all my questions for the city manager. Thank yeah, you. Do you have any questions? No. For the city manager? No, okay. Um, I know I emailed you a few questions, Vanessa, um, regarding like some of the landscaping uh, concerns that are presented to the community. If you just want to update like, the council and the community. I'm sure, uh, Mayor, we will uh, provide an update as well uh, with uh, when our public works director, I'm sorry, superintendent brings this report in during next meeting. Um, if you, rec if the council recalls, uh, we did have the sewer, a sewer emergency, the, the, the pipe, uh, we had a breakage at the sewer plant and we unfortunately had to use all of our resources available in order to uh, attend to this emergency at the time. Um, at the same time, as um, it's happening with many other um, cities, this is a, a, a very competitive labor market. We have, um, we have had some um, vacancies in our landscape department and, um, and in which we have already filled but they will be go, uh, undergoing training and, um, and, 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 and we will be making the landscaping and for the parks a priority now that this sewer um, emergency, it's, it's already behind us and uh, that we, have, we were able to fill these uh, vacancies. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, all right, so if there's no more questions, we'll go on and move on to Please, city. Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, I apologize. Okay, go ahead. Just one question. Um, so, normally for, for invoices, when, when, when the city receives invoices, or in this case, uh, city attorney invoices, how, how are they processed? Are they, is there someone at City Hall that receives them, pays them, or is there a process to review, uh, or actually any other invoices, not just the city attorney, can you? explain or share what the process is so I can have a better understanding. Um, sure, invoices that are, that come through with this, through the city, or through our desk, they're reviewed so, um, so we can, we can justify that services have been rendered or the goods have been received if we are ordering uh, goods from a vendor and once we can um, once we can officially certify that that is the case we will be we we process those invoices for payment um, if there is a question or dispute we normally hold um, hold payment for the invoice or if there is a d dispute in one particular area we would process a partial payment um, for, 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 for the services that uh, have been rendered or in, 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 in we would we would work with the vendor in the, um, in the appropriate departments that may have the dispute on, 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 a, on a service on goods or something. Okay and, and so my concern is because in the past I have, raise concerns or questions in regards to some items and I really don't know if they were ever credited, paid, because I just asked the questions and then later there's no response either from, from your office or from the attorney's office. So um, I, I think the first, one of the first items th that I had questions about goes went back over six months ago, uh, and there's a list, um, and it seems like I have a question almost at every invoice, and but nothing. Those questions and concerns are never addressed back to me, so I don't know if they're fixed, if there were errors, uh, if they were credited, uh, if we paid them. Um, and sometimes it, 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 it is kind of hard to keep track of, of everything on the invoices, but you know, uh, 
the more time that, uh, and, and I don't know if Tom can answer that or not, or, or uh, so. I can't, I literally just turn in my time to the office up in Sacramento and they compile it with everybody else's time that worked on Livingston Matters and it comes down here and that's usually the last I. Okay, so, so you, when I have questions and then like for instance, if I direct the question to a city manager and to yourself, is that refer over to, because so who, who would I need to send it to? Councilmember Moran, I will go back to the, um, the questions that that you have sent and work with the, our city attorney's office, billing department, and um, in the White Brenner's partner to provide an answer. Okay, so, but my concern is to that we are paying invoices for which we have questions about, which, in my personal opinion, and then again, I don't know all the fine print and. I'm not the finance expert here, or, but we shouldn't be paying invoices that we have questions about. And uh, uh, so also, I'm, I'm, okay, so we can address that later. Um, how would I go about requesting an audit, about re an audit on, on those, uh, attorney invoices, is that something that I have to do myself? Is that something that city staff can work on? Or I don't mind doing it myself if I have to. Um, or do we need to actually contract or consider consider contracting an outside agency if that's the case? I'm sorry. No, I, I, I was going to say if, if there is a request that you would like to put for staff to provide direction or an action, uh, we will, I, I would feel that the appropriate place is for, for council to provide direction on future agenda items and we can place them on a future agenda item for discussion and direction. Okay, I, I, th I can do that. Um, and I think, well, let's see. I think that's it. I'll ask my other question in my uh, in my report. Thank you, uh, City Council Member announcements and reports. Council Member King. Yeah, last night I attended a music in the park, and this afternoon I attended another meeting with Mosquito Bay. That's it. Thank you, uh, Council Member Jose Mora. So, okay, um, and I think let's see, and this is probably. For council, as a, as a council member, how can I, what are my rights, should I, for me to be able to have legal advice from another attorney's office? Um, is, that, is that a process that has to go through the city manager's office? find that attorney's office that can provide legal advice and questions that I have in related to city matters and concerns? Or do I have to go through your office and, and have to go with another office that you select? Well, it, <laughs> if you want a second opinions on things, it, you. It, there would have to be concurrence of the council for that, and then concurrence to hire additional legal uh, help. Concurrence, what do you mean concurrence with the council? Three council members agree to pay for that. Do you wanna pay like for your own attorney? Is that what you're meaning? No, so, so let's say that I have, like normally if, if, if I have concerns, you know, on a normal situation, I would feel comfortable going with Tom. It's like, hey, Tom, I have this question, this concern. And then I would get advice, right? If I want to get a second opinion, then you should be able to, my understanding is that you should be able to provide that 
second opinion from another outside agency not having to do with approval by council, by majority. Th that's not how I've had it done in the past. Because then you could have five council members with each with a list of items and the, you know, just taking it to its logical extreme, it wouldn't uh, be financially efficient for the city. So if I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying that I'm not allowed for a second opinion unless the majority of the council approves it. Yeah, the, the city attorney is the attorney for the council, mm -hmm. well, representing the citizens through the city council, not as individual council members. So the council is the client. Yes, but. So that being the case, a majority of the council would need to approve uh, seeking and paying for the additional advice. So here, here's a perfect example. If I have a question in regards to this item, who do I go to for a second opinion? It doesn't, it should not have to have majority of the council approval to, to get a second opinion because it's an individual concern, it's not a council concern. Well, like I said, I, I've never heard that done because again, you could have five council members all wanting to have their individual items, you know, paid for with city funds. And the client and the city is the client, not the individual council member. So how would I be able to have that advice? Because I haven't had any advice. I haven't felt comfortable having any advice for months. And I still have concerns. So I need some. Well, I, I, that's probably best. You know, we've got city manager and city attorney evaluations coming up. I think that would be the... Uh, perfect time to bring it up in that context. Or maybe reach out to other jurisdictions, maybe that are facing the same issue and do some research and see how other city council members or mayors get their second opinion if they ever need one or whatever the case might be. Okay. Um, and so my other question is, and, and, I, and then again, I don't, thank you, Tom. And I don't know who who would need to be addressed in regards to this. Our last meeting two weeks ago, there were closed session items, and those two items in closed session, they were to be postponed. And we all agree that they were gonna be postponed until this meeting. And why were, that, why were there, if we were in agreement, why were they not in this meeting? And then again, I don't know who would be able to answer that question. Um, I think a decision was made to pull them out because I think Doug wasn't gonna be here. Um, Doug wanted to be present during that evaluation, which was the items that were posted. Um, and I had received word that I think not all the council was gonna be here. Um, so that's why a decision was made to move it forward. We all did show up today. What was that? Then, but we all ended up showing up today anyways, but that was the reasoning behind it. Yeah, so I just want to, I just want to express that it's, 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 you know, I, I, I can only speak for myself. I mean, I made plan changes specifically to be here and not have to travel tonight to be able to do what, a, what we agreed on and, and it's just, I think it's a little bit irresponsible to be able to, you know, not think of others when we're doing, you know, changes as important as this. But I just wanted to ask that question real quick and thank you for responding. Um, and I think that's it for now. Thank you. Um, Council Member Maria Soto. I attended the MCAG meeting last Thursday. It was a great presentation. 
in regards to homelessness. Uh, I could forward that presentation as soon as it's emailed to me to the rest of the council. Um, other than that, that's about it. Thank you. Um, Mayor Pritam Garcia on the phone. Uh, can you repeat, please? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, I don't have anything today. Can okay. you guys hear me? All right. Thank you. All right. So we're gonna go move on to mayor announcements and reports. Um, I had the opportunity to meet with um, our planning department, our engineering department. Uh, you know, catching up with staff and getting updates and staying informed. Um, trying to communicate with Manessa via email a lot. Um, you know, just I know the council works in general, so it's it's hard. Uh, to meet in person sometimes, but um, you know, trying to stay uh, informed of uh, you know different um, projects going on in town and um, advocating for uh, what the public and the community ask for and need need for or answer their questions. So it was a nice meeting with the plan department last week, um, just going over all the different projects um, and uh, changes they're planning on doing and uh, things they're pushing through and, and going through the process. Uh, it was nice meeting with, uh, with the engineers department today and getting an update on all the projects, timelines, um, projections, and, and uh, you know, so it's, it's nice to get an update. Uh, I know the public never, uh, sometimes don't get to see the background that, uh, you know, the work that it takes in the background to finally get to the, you know, um, to the, you know, completion or, or starting the project, but there's a lot of work in the background that, that happens and it's, you know, it's nice getting those updates and seeing that things are moving forward. Um, so thanks uh, to all the department heads and staff um, for meeting with me. Um, uh, music in the Park, thank you, Mr. Winton. I, I know I was able to attend a, a couple of them. Um, um, you know, it was uh, got a lot of good feedback from the community. Um, uh, regarding, um, uh, regarding the time capsule, I know um, I, I volunteered to I volunteered to take on this project, the time capsule, so um, I met with the engineers today um, and uh, they're gonna help me out with uh, designing the, the time capsule and I'll be in communication with them later this week. Um, so that, that's moving forward. We also uh, had a, a donation for a commemorative plaque for the centennial that'll be going by the uh, museum. Um, separate from, I think, the one Rex doing. So I was able to work with the um, the plaque people and get that going and ordered and designed and all that good stuff. So it's moving forward. Should be getting it here on time uh, to put it up. Um, in regards to the 4th of July, I know a lot of people have been asking. Uh, trust me, I've been working a lot with Julio Valadez and get, trying to make this happen. Um, uh, it's just, it's been hard to secure anything for the actually the 4th of July weekend. So the decision was made to shoot for, uh, along with the 4th of July committee, to move move it to the 9th, which is Monday's the 4th, so that very next following weekend. Um, you know, I, we, we actually went out and, and talked to a lot of community members, see what they thought, see if it was, um, you know, something the community wanted or just wait. Um, but everybody we talked to, out of all the people we talked to, everybody wanted something better than nothing. Um, and in previous years, uh, when 4th of July has landed on, like during the week, it's moved to the uh, weekend pre uh, prior or, or the following weekend. Uh, there's been several occasions like that. Um, so we are moving, we're trying to move to the 9th. We've been in communication with the um, fireworks company. Um, it, I think they were just getting the okay from the CEO today. Um, so we're still very hopeful that it, you know, it's, it's, it's a go. As soon as uh, we get the okay, we'll start promoting it. and advice the city um, uh, so it's just we're, we're almost there so hang on tight I know everybody's asking um, the, the the money that the city council approved is specifically for fireworks I know Julio and myself uh, wanted to have some entertainment and um, if, if it's a go then we're gonna be moving forward with that as soon as possible so uh, thank you for your patience but I know after uh, several years of COVID and not having a 4th of July, I think it'll be nice for the community, even if it's a s different day. It gives an opportunity to people go to Turlock or Atwater or other cities on the 4th, and then that we can have uh, spend time here in Livingston and maybe other cities can come down as well and enjoy um, a little 4th of July festival 
or the Little Fortune of July uh, celebration. So uh, stay tuned. We should announce it here by, I'm hoping by tomorrow. I mean, I was hoping today, but hopefully by tomorrow. So stay tuned. Um, thank you for your patience. And we're really trying to make it happen. Uh, we met with Julio, like I met with him a few times and constant regular communication. Um, you know, I trust me, I called up and down the state and out of state and there was nobody available that Friday, Saturday, Sunday or Monday. Um, I, we really tried to make it happen. So um, that was the next best thing. And I think the community deserves a fireworks show. Um, so that's my updates. Um, uh, just uh, in the future, I know we're having, uh, I know uh, we talked about this in the past regarding the sister city with uh, Municipal Churincio. I've been in communication with the new Presidenta Municipal uh, and it's a go and I'll be bringing the item to council and she'll be coming over to visit and I'll be going over there to visit. So we'll be, I'll be reaching out to different uh, committees around the community that are from that municipality in Mexico and, and touching base with them to come up with a, a nice little celebration when that happens. Uh, and I'll, I should be starting those, just meeting with them this weekend coming up. Um, like I said, just been advocating and getting, trying to get stuff done, like the landscaping thing. I know there was a light um, not on Don Myers Park, I believe. I sent you the email on that, Vanessa. I think it was forwarded to Public Works, and there's a light um, that's out on one of the parks, so we're trying to address that. And there, you know, little things here and there. Um, we always want to make our city look good and nice, and community be proud of their town, and uh, that's what we, uh, you know, the community deserves. So we've been working on that, uh, try, trying to address the little things, and uh, the little things, if you add them up, you know, makes a big difference. Um, other than that, I believe that's all. Um, in regards to, we're gonna go on, move on to our consent agenda. Can I ask a legal, um, to yeah. uh, question to legal, please? Um, sure, go ahead. Uh, Tom, so, because at the last council meeting, we approved this budget for, for the fireworks on a specific date. Shouldn't, if we change something on that, I guess, on that conversation or approval, shouldn't it be coming back to council? If, like in this case, if we change, if the date is changed because it was approved by the majority of the council? Well, I think that it was a little fluid, I know, at the last meeting. So I think that the mayor's update, if you have a problem with that, then you, you know, this is the time to bring it up and say, Hey, uh, are we all okay with this? That that would be my but recommendation. Even if it's not on the agenda. Well, it, again, it was a, a minute motion at the last meeting that was kind of fluid, and it's a a ceremonial type thing. It's not a, anything else. The, the expenditure of money was already, you know, determined. So when you're talking about changing the date, I think consensus of the council is fine to change that. That was it. A for the 4th of July fireworks, or did it have a specific date? I don't re remember. Uh, I don't think I had it. We submitted the report that it was going to take place on July 3rd. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that, I was just thinking about that right now. So, because it was part of the report to a specific date. I mean, I'm all okay, I, you know, I'm, but because there was a date, there's a budget, the you know, there was a consensus for the budget of twenty thousand dollars, because otherwise, you know, some, you know, any one of us can later say it's like, okay, I want to change that to not twenty, but thirty or forty or fifty. You know, it's what it, it, it kind of goes back to the same thing. So well, I, yeah. I, I, that's, that is just my concern. Expenditure, changing the expenditure money definitely would have to come back more formally. Okay, so. So based on your legal advice, we don't need to. I don't think you do any need to do anything more formal than have this discussion and make sure everybody's okay with the date. I'm good with the night. That, that was just my concern. So just for legal purposes, because then otherwise, you know, we could be changing things up at every meeting. I'm okay with, you know, I, 
I'm, I'm, I'm in favor, but my point of view is doing things that then later I can come back in two weeks and change something about something that we approved before. And, you know, well, it, it, you know, you have to be discerning each time and some things are more important than others. So I don't think changing I mean, the date is a lot different than changing it. Yeah, I don't think you could change the dollar amount. I would have to bribe the finance director and I know exactly. So, I mean, that's a the whole different thing um, than changing, uh, um, you know, something else. Changing the date on a, I mean, just don't, we're not changing the amount or anything like that. Yeah, the procedure is important, but the main purpose is to, you know, do things for the city. And, you know, we're not the, the Congress, so we try to be people friendly, but still do things right along the way. Well, there's a fine line between trying to do the right thing and do the legal thing, so I'm just, that's just my concern. So. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on to our consent agenda. I have uh, one more thing. So sorry. Yes, go ahead. Um, just on the, tonight's packet, I just noticed that there aren't minutes attached to it from previous meetings. And also, I just wanted to, I understand that we do, we've been trying to, for the past year, have a lot of uh, citizens come in, make public comments on just any, on, on anything on the agenda that, that is, is concerning. Uh, recently, we've, well, not even recently, but in the past, we've had emails that have gotten lost. Um, so I still feel that that might be an, an item for discussion. So there is a protocol I know it's listed on how residents or any concerned citizens should submit those. But if we don't know that they're being submitted, because it just reminded me, because we got a, a type notice from a, a citizen, but it wasn't, a, I don't believe it was a public comment. Uh, it's just being shared with us. So I appreciate that, that uh, we are getting information forwarded on to council that is being received from citizens. But along with that, what, and, and specifically, I, I remember that there was some emails and they just kept going back and forth that they were being sent, but nobody was, re was getting them. So I just got, wanna know what is our procedure when citizens submit a public comment uh, for the meeting that m many times they haven't been provided to us up here on the dais, n nor have they been found in your uh, city email. So what, what is that policy? Are, are, because we're not getting information from our citizens, that we should be aware of, why, and I know that that question has come up. People are saying, well, CC this person, CC that person, but as a council, we should be all receiving the same kind of information. Um, Councilwoman Soto, we have, um, we, we have been very receptive of those, um, of those times in which um, emails have been received and um, in, 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 People that have logged in have made comments saying we submitted something and, um, and it wasn't shared as part of the uh, public comment section. Um, our deputy city clerk does have a process. We do have a, 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 a deadline of 2 p.m. for any written um, comments that are submitted to the city council at livingstoncity.com email. And um, our deputy city clerk does have a process or it's part of her procedure that after 3 p.m. she logs in into this um, email account to check for any comments that, are, um, that have come in. And she also checks on the spam inbox to see if there's anything that has been rejected by our filtering system to the spam box so that it has been put in place. Um, and this is the process that we do every time we have a council meeting. Okay, so when they're not submitted by that deadline, and with it being a citizen concern, we are, are we still are we still privileged to get that information? I believe our deputy city clerk does forward anything that it is part of that inbox. It may not be part of the public record of the meeting, but 
she does um, forward those emails to the council. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move to consent agenda. Uh, items in the consent calendar are considered routine or non-controversial and will be enacted by a well vote unless uh, separate action is requested by the city manager city council member. There'll be no separate discussion on, on these items unless members of the council or city manager request that these items be removed. Uh, we have items one through six, but I know Councilmember Maria Soto requested um, uh, item number six um, to be pulled out. So do we want to take action on items one through five, Council? Does anybody have a motion? I'll approve the consent agenda one through five. Uh, we have a motion by Councilor Maria Soto. Do we have a second? Yeah. I'll second it myself. So, Monica. Roll call. Council Member Soto? Yes. Council Member Moran? Yes. Council Member King? Yes. Mayor Patim Garcia? Yes. Mayor Aguilar? Yes. Motion approved by a vote of 5-0. All right, item number six, authorized continuation of the 2021-22 fiscal year budget resolution continuing the 2021-22 fiscal year budget and authorizing city manager to make expenditures to meet current financial obligations until the 2022-23 fiscal year budget is adopted. Is there a particular question that we need to, that you would like to address, Council Member? With this, um, being the deadline of, of July 1st, I, I am not seeing how we're able to, to move forward with paying items without even knowing what our budget will be, with, with money that we don't, that we're not aware of, that's coming in, mm -hmm. being spent, and continue to be spent. The resolution approves four operating items to continue. So the request is for anything. We're not moving forward with any projects that council has not approved. It's basically moving forward with approving to the city to meet its obligations with operating general maintenance and operations invoices that we pay on a day-to-day -day basis to continue op operations. Is there a way that we can have a written report of what is going to be paid prior? Um, you do get the check warrants on a, every time that we bring the items to council. That's at least two weeks out. And, and we, we pay on, we report and we bring that to the council um, every, every time we we have a meeting for the warrants to um, be ratified. I would feel more comfortable if we knew what they were beforehand. Um, I'm sorry, but this is what we have done in the past uh, when we have a um, when we have brought the budget after um, after its deadline of July 1st. This is um, regular a regular process. Um, that, it, that, that, that we did in 2020, and we have done it many times um, in, in other years when we, ha when we have had staffing shortages as well. I have a question on this, Vanessa. Do you have a timeline when you, you'll be presenting the budget? Yes, we're looking at providing, uh, we're wrapping up with our projections and we're looking at uh, providing the council um, a copy of the draft budget by the, um, by the third week in July and bringing the um, budget workshops um, in, in early August. Um, just real quick, I know this is just a, 
I mean, I've obviously been in the council before. I've seen this item before, and it's to basically to keep the lights on and moving forward for a procedure kind of item. Um, but I think it's very important that we um, obviously get on the budget and pass a balanced budget as soon as possible. Um, you mentioned that we'll get a draft like in July. Yes, and, and we are working uh, on that. Yeah. Um, we're working, we have our projections and our, our goal is to present a balanced budget to the council. We're working on balancing that budget. Um, at the moment, uh, we are going through um, last um, revisions and, um, and, and we will put the book together for the council to have plenty of time to review it, to, to have it and, and to dissect it and be able to um, um, have questions if, if, if you have questions before our, our, our budget workshops take place that you can ask those questions and be prepared. Um, at the same time, our, our, our goal was to present or have this budget completed and have it adopted by July 1st, but um, as um, the council is very well aware, we have had um, not just um, shortages in, um, in, in our staffing side, but we also have a, 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 an audit that it's taking place. We have grants that we have applied and that we need to provide reporting. We have the regular day-to-day -day, um, duties that the, 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 our team needs to, um, needs to complete. So um, this is something that it, it's, it's not the best case scenario for us to not have the budget to you um, approved by July 1st, but it, this is also not the first time that uh, we request an extension to have this, um, to give us a little bit more time and to get this completed. With that being said, I, I, I just heard you, it's not the first time, however, you just, stated that you're going through some revisions. Is there a possibility to have a workshop within the next, within this week or next week, just to hear from um, where we are? Because if it's just, if it's a preliminary budget that's being presented, why can't we just have those numbers so that we have a, a ball, ball, ball figure for the city? Um, we have raw data that we're extracting from the, from the system and that's what we're reading. We need to put it into a format that it is useful to, um, to the council, to the, uh, to the public that can, can, can read and understand it. We have, we're working on those tables, updating them. So even though we have, a, um, a, we have preliminary numbers, they're not in a format that it is how we present it to the council that it's easy to read and understand and follow. Well, with the, being a workshop, we'd be able to pose those questions to you, correct? Uh, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have the, if we were to have a workshop, we would be taken away from building the budget book to put something that is preliminary and it's not balanced. We want to bring forward a budget that is balanced and that it is, um, it's, it's ready for the council to, to have dialogue on the, um, on, 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 the, on, on, their, on your priorities and, uh, and, and we can move forward. We have preliminary numbers, but they're not ready to be shown to council because they're not in the format that we would, we would show it. It's raw data that we plug into the system and we read it because we have access to that system. We need to extract the data, put it into uh, in, into the tables that the council's, council and the community is used to seeing and they can read it and understand it. We don't have that. And we are asking and we're, we're forecasting that this is gonna, this is gonna, we're gonna have it completed by mid-July. I would like to see, I know, I mean, I know it's uh, staffing stuff and uh, issues or um, shortage and um, I know it's a lot of work, but I would like to see some kind of workshops like, you know, in the, in the next month, you know, within July. Uh, I know you mentioned August, but um, 
you know, usually, I know usually it's like three workshops. Usually we, what we've done in the past at least is done like three workshops, but I know the final workshop is actually the council meeting where we actually vote the, for the budget. Um, so that might facilitate or make things a little easier. Like if you're shooting for the first week of August, maybe that'll be the third. I mean, the first meeting in August will be the third workshop or something like that. Our plan is to bring this workshops we're calling them workshops. They're special council meetings for budget hearing. So okay. there they will be workshops that um, that our sole focus will be the budget yeah. review. It, we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to serve the public or serve the council any good if we try to commingle um, the budget hearing with a regular council meeting because we have a lot of other city business to take care of in a regular council meeting. So this will be yeah, a special thing. meeting. Yeah. Yes. Any other questions? No more questions? Okay, we'll take it out for public comment. Any public comment? Anybody on the phone? All right. I do, but it's really off the book. It uh, has, has to be related to this item. Okay, we'll bring it back to council. Uh, any motions? Motion to approve. We have a motion by Councilmember Jose Moran. Do we have a second? I'll second that item. Roll call, Councilmember Soto. Yes. Councilmember Moran. Yes. Councilmember King. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Garcia. Yes. Mayor Aguilar. Yes. Motion approved by a vote of five zero. Thank you. We're going to go on to discussion potential action items number seven, authorized contract with WGR for storm drain compli compliance reporting. A resolution approving the professional service agreement between City of Livingston and WGR Southwest Phase 2 MS4 and general NPDES permit compliance services. Um, yes, Mayor, Council Members, this item in front of you is to approve a contract with WGR Southwest Inc. Um, this is the company that currently uh, provides all of our MS4 uh, storm drain compliance reporting, and they also do the uh, storm drain um, permitting process and review. Um, this company has, back in 2016, this company um, was contracted by the city, and it was um, contracted in an effort to join forces with other cities in the Central Valley to um, to provide this kind of services with the um, with with the expectation that by sharing resources we would be um, we would be better. It's worked out very efficiently, and um, and, and and currently this is um, this is something that it's a contract that we share or we share resources with uh, other twenty municipalities in the area. Um, the contract is for one year. And um, it's the total contract. It's about fifty-five thousand dollars, from which um, twenty-three thousand dollars is also estimated to be paid from the development plan check fees. Um, absent this um, WGR to provide this service, um, we would not be able to submit the reports for the MS4 permits, which is a mandated. Um, it's a it's a mandated report that we have to submit to the state and absent the city um, submitting this report we would also be in out of compliance with state and federal agencies that in turn could potentially um, impose they, they, they could uh, it could lead to fines up to ten thousand dollars from the state per day that it, this report is not submitted um, in uh, up to twenty-seven thousand dollars for from the federal for fines. So um, with that, we would like to um, we are recommend staff is recommending that we continue this agreement with WGR. Thank you, Council. Any questions? I'll take it out for public comment. Anybody on the phone? I'll bring it back to council. Uh, thank you for putting this under discussion. Um, uh, at the MS4 reporting, is that an annual reporting, on an annual reporting basis or ongoing? 
It is ongoing. Ongoing, okay. And then, uh, I know uh, besides the 23,000, uh, does the rest of the funding for that come from the waste fund? The, su fund. the sewer, sewer fund, fund, fund um, provides the uh, funding for this um, contract. Perfect, thank you. Um, and like you mentioned, I think this, uh, it's just basically an extension of services that we've, we've worked with this, um, with this company and I think it's worked out, so, uh, so far it's worked out fine and other municipalities use, use them as well. Um, Council, any other questions? All right, any motions, direction? Motion to approve. We have a motion by Jose Moran. Council Member Jose Moran, do we have a second? I'll second it myself. Monica. Roll call, Council Member Soto. Yes. Council Member Moran. Yes. Council Member Kane. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Garcia. Yes. Mayor Aguilar. Yes. Motion approved by a vote of five zero. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and move on to item number eight. Tom, do we have to do these separately? Eight and nine, this is phase one and phase two. Okay, so, okay. accepting phase one, paving uh, six dirt alleys as complete. And our city engineer will take on this uh, next two items. Nice seeing you guys. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, Council, members of the public. Uh, these were uh, indeed two projects that were bid together, but I can go through them separately. The phase one uh, alley improvement was for six alleys. And uh, so what you have before you is a recommendation to accept the work as done, the work has been completed, and then to authorize the city to file a notice of completion. And then 35 days after that notice of completion is recorded to uh, release the, the retention to the contractor. Thank you, sir. Okay. Council, any questions at this moment? All right, we'll take it out for public comment. Anybody, anybody on the phone? All right, bring it back to council. Uh, you, could you just identify the six alleys that were paved? Do we have that information? I, I do not have that here. Okay. All right. You say you did or you didn't? I no. do not. Oh, I do not. Okay. I do not have that here. Okay. Don't know them off the top of my head. And this went through the bidding process, correct? Correct. Okay. Yes. And the famous question everybody asks, I know that everybody wants to know when the next alleys will be paved. <laughs> need, need to find some money for that. <laughs> All right, so um, any other questions, Council? We have any motions? Uh, go ahead. A question real quick. I know that during the process, I can at least remember one resident not being happy, not satisfied, but not happy with uh, in the process their their main valve water water, water service the water, water service, meter yeah was covered and and then they ended up having a water break in the front yard and by the time someone was out and it was during the weekend and by the time someone was there or someone from Public Works arrived, they figure out that the back, that, that, that valve had been covered and it took a little bit more time, you know, by the time mm -hmm. they got to it. All right. So that was the second time that I had a resident share that concern, but in this time it was, you know, in the meantime we had water running or just gushing. Right. Um, I'm assuming that all, all of that was, all of those little details were fixed before today. Correct. Yeah, all, all those, whatever items were needed to be fixed were taken care of through a punch list after the final inspection, then checked again. So those were, and I recall some of those, uh, where some of the boxes, that's the lids were covered. Yeah, with some okay. aggregate base, but then cleaned up. Yeah, okay, and and and, and actually the, probably this question isn't that for you, but probably for Vanessa. I don't know if you, because one of the concerns was for this resident was like, well, you know, water's been running for 30 minutes plus whatever time it took to have access. So it was probably like an hour. 
And then, you know, one thing that those residents says, like, they better not be charging me for, you know, that water bill. Um, what would happen in, I mean, is, is the resident still responsible for it or I'm just, I, I don't know. I just, I'm just curious. Normally the, the resident would come in and we do have a claim form that they would put, uh, that they would, pr that they would bring over to the city. So we could either, um, provide fixing of if something was broken. I mean, yeah. I think in this case, we uh, we were already aware of the situation that, that something right. broke and we were responsible for it. But at the same time, uh, we do let them know that if there is any tr overages in their water consumption that it, um, that, they, that they feel that um, need to be reversed or adjusted, that they need mm -hmm. to bring it forward. The only thing is that uh, we do have the um, we do have the resident, the um, allocation of residential water of 25,000 gallons. So if their consumption is slow and there was a water leak or this unfortunate event took place, but they still were not, un they're still within that allocation, then they, yeah. their bill is not impacted. Right. And normally these leaks occur within the alley, which means that's before it goes into the meter. So it would be leaking in the alley, and it's not metered into the house. Okay, so, and then, I'm trying to think back to that other concern was, I think they, they you know, it, one of the trees in the back in the, in the alley or something like that, or their fence or something like that was, yeah, there, there were a lot of fences that are actually encroaching on city right away. A lot okay. of illegal stuff that's been done with gates and things yeah. of that nature. And the city was very accommodating and uh, mitigating whatever issues there were and leaving things as they were. So when it comes to those fences be not being in their property, who, um, which department would, would be the right department? You, you well, well that, that would be enforcement at this point, but when okay. the fences were built, if, if the city sees the fences being built, obviously it should be handled at that time. But these, these fences have been there for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good to know, you know, at yeah. least when they call and, well, maybe I can yeah. go out there and, right. I mean, it's not like I'm the expert, but. So right. A lot of those fence, a lot of those gates also open towards the um, outside. The outside, which they're not supposed to. You're supposed, you, sh you shouldn't have things opening onto the city right away. Oh, I see. well, see, I already learned two things today. There you go. Thank you for the <laughs> education. Thank you. <laughs> you bet. Any other questions? Motion to approve. Yeah, motion by Jose. Second. Uh, Councilman Moran. Second by Councilmember King. Roll call. Councilmember Soto. Yes. Councilmember Moran. Yes. Councilmember King. Yes. Mayor Potem Garcia. Yes. Mayor Aguilar. Yes. Motion approved by a vote of five zero. Thank you. Item number nine: accepting phase two paving two dirt alleys as complete. So it's the same thing as just. This is the same thing. Similar project. Yeah. Bid together. This was. A, a separate project because of the funding uh, timing on it. And the difference with this one, instead of six alleys, was two alleys. Thank you. Council, any questions? Yes, actually, it's a good thing that we have two items, but, and I just thought about it. So can you share a little bit, explain a little bit, that way when people get to watch this video, they can learn or like, it's not just like, okay, so we need that alley, can we just send people out tomorrow? What is the process, where does, where the money comes from, sure. and normally how long does it take? So it's not an overnight project, it's something that has been on the works for X amount of time. Can you right. share? Sure. Th these were funded through CMAC, Congestion Mitigation Air Quality. So the, the goal here is to reduce emissions. So these were unpaved, now they're paved. So you're reducing emissions. The funding is through the COG, through MCAG. Uh, in terms of timing, these are programmed when there's calls for project and the city applies for it, uh, for that funding. In terms of scoping which, which alleys will be built, that's something that the city determines based on its needs. 
and then relays to our office and we uh, go ahead and do that. So th the city does have a, a priority list of uh, the alleys and then when when these were in all, all projects when they, prior to going into uh, the, the application mode separately brought up to council so these were br brought up but that's several years these take a long time so um, they normally are programmed and there's several um, phases of the programming first one is soft cost as they call it PE which is for environmental clearance design uh, the whole number of things and then you go into construction, uh, uh, which ba it's basically that construction and construction management. Normally projects like this take at least two years from the time that the programming goes, uh, uh, or the application goes in and then it gets programmed and then gets obligated, so it, it's an easy two years. So, okay, I think you answered my first, well, another question that I had, <laughs> which, which was what is the process on that priority list, I'm assuming that city manager comes up with that list and then it's presented to the council. It's normally public works. Okay, so public works, I want to see, I learned another thing today. So it's public works that comes up with that list, then it's presented to council, yes. and then council approves it, then and it then moves the to application your goes in, and then if it's successful, the money gets uh, programmed as you go through all the work, and then after it's programmed, it gets what they call obligated. It's basically it was kind of set aside for you, and then when it's obligated, it actually goes to you so you can use it. What would happen if, um, if you know, a hundred dollars are set aside and approved for that project, but now with the cost of Things yep. now it's 150 dollars. What happens? Yeah, and, and we are seeing that. Uh, this, these were built right on <laughs> just before all this crazy thing with prices went up. But we, you're seeing a lot of that where something is estimated at 100 thousand dollars and it ends up being 150. Uh, the cog is the, for MCAG. The cog is very uh, cognizant of that, and they and the cog has been helping a lot of agencies with supplementing funding. So that hasn't been a terrible uh, situation at this point, because all the cities, all the agencies are in the, in the same boat. So, and it is it is challenging because a lot of the projects that were programmed years ago will go into construction now that things are roughly gone up 30, 40, 50 percent. And because I don't think you have another item here, I'm just gonna take advantage of you sure, being there. Sure, sure. So we have a, a, a street by of, of Peach and Dwight behind the temple. Okay. Half of it it's city, half of the road is city, half of the road is county. And the half of the county is not in very good shape compared to the, so if eventually the county decides that they'll be able to come out and fix it. Is there something that has to come? It shouldn't have some, it shouldn't be anything to do with you, right? Cause it's Correct. If it's on, in, in the county, then the county takes care of it. Sometimes counties and cities work together on those streets that each of the agencies owns half of. If there's some funding to do work on both uh, sides, then sometimes uh, agencies join forces and they go ahead and bid a project together, something like that. Okay, thank you. Sure. Take it out to public comment. Anybody on the phone? Bring it back to council for direction. Any motions? Move to approve. Yeah, motion. Second. 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 Monica? Roll call, council member Soto? Yes. Council member Moran? Yes. Council member King? Yes. Mayor Pinkham Garcia? Yes. Mayor Aguilar? Yes. Motion approved by a vote of 5 0. 10. Item number 10. Approve the City of Livingston fiscal year 22 23 list of elig eligible projects for funding from the road maintenance and rehabilitation account, or as better known, RMRA. Yes, it's, it's a mouthful, but our engineering department will <laughs> speak to that. <laughs> yeah, I apologize for that in advance. Um, Good evening, Mayor, um, rest of City Council. Uh, my name is Noe Martinez with the City Engineer's Office. <clears throat> to, 
talk about briefly on this uh, item. It is a um, routine approval um, item for the city that is required by the um, California Transportation Commission uh, in order for the city to receive its next uh, fiscal year funding allocation uh, from this funding program, which begins in July and ends uh, in June of next year. So the requirement, what it is, is uh, basically preparing a project list that, uh, that the city um, prioritizes for uh, possible implementation uh, with uh, this uh, funding. Uh, the city is not obligated to um, construct any or uh, all of these projects, um, but it is a requirement that the city um, identified uh, these uh, projects as potential uh, candidates. Uh, the uh, funding that will be available uh, for the city for the following fiscal year is approximately 350000 and uh, it is uh, funding that can be used for any street-related purposes as long as it doesn't have to do with uh, development, uh, new development-driven, development, development driven, uh, mainly uh, uh, maintenance and uh, rehabilitation. And then the, just to note, um, the, the, the projects that uh, have been identified uh, for the list, uh, some of these uh, are projects that have been uh, on the list from previous years, including the Winton Parkway rehabilitation Hammett Avenue Rehabilitation, St Stefani Avenue Rehabilitation, and then um, the 2023 Slurry Seals Project. Uh, and in the report, uh, we include details as far as uh, the limits and uh, the different streets um, that will be uh, that would be worked on. With that said, this item is to approve uh, the resolution that uh, will in turn be submitted to the uh, commission for. Um, approval of uh, the city's next uh, uh, funding allocation. With that, uh, if there's any questions. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I know we had a, when we had a meeting, we, had, we touched basis on this a little bit. Um, and I was asking if, um, is that something that all these projects get automatically funded? Um, but obviously, you, as you know, noted that it's, um, you know, basically the city has to save the money, gather the money for that project, and then go ahead and, and use it. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, on the list, there's some projects that uh, obviously would cost more than the uh, yearly allocation, and uh, in those instances, uh, the city is able to bank the allocations for a number of years until it's able to uh, collect enough to uh, implement some of these projects. Thank you, sir. Council, any other qu questions? Yes. So you mentioned two things, very important, potential candidates. So the list here are potential candidates. They're candidates. It doesn't mean, so if we get, you know, once, if, if or when we get the funding or the allocated, um, those are potential candidates, the ones who are listed here. If, can those candidates be changed? And by who? Who uh, makes that decision? The uh, council, council makes that decision. Um, so what would happen is, let's say, for example, between now and, and um, June of next year, the council identifies uh, another priority project that they really want to implement. Um, the, uh, the council would, um, by uh, action, um, either approve um, a bid that would be done by that project or an application or, or, or um, uh, authorization to move forward with uh, such a project. And what, what happens is that the, the, the commission has uh, this program set up to where at, uh, at this point we're basically identifying the projects that could be completed, but then later in the year the city gets to do an actual expenditure report and it's part of the, the, the staff description here where the city actually reports on which, on the actual projects that were completed. So the city has that flexibility uh, per the commission to be able to reprioritize projects, either take from the list, add from the list, and so and whatnot. Okay, and, and then because this is 
a separate item that, that the funding comes from. This is SB1 funding for the residents. Can you explain one? I mean, I know what SB1 is, but can you explain that? And then, um, and then also if within SB1, it's only for roads or sidewalks or additional uh, walking paths uh, or only for maintenance and rehabilitation? Uh, yes, um, so to explain what the, what the funding is or where it comes from, uh, there's a description in the staff report that I'll summarize. Uh, back in 2017, the state of California actually uh, approved um, a um, bond um, that uh, that would uh, collect uh, actually taxes, gas taxes from from people from uh, the uh, the residents to be able to set aside funding specifically for for roads uh, for road improvements. So um, the uh, the tax that is collected, I believe, is a one half cent. Um, uh, from uh, each uh, gallon of gas. Uh, don't quote me on that. I, I'm trying to figure out exactly what the, the amount is, but it's around there. So uh, so then, yeah, what the state does, collects all the money, then re redistributes to the different cities based on um, uh, road mileage and, uh, and population. They're, they have a formula on how each city gets uh, uh, the, their amounts. Uh, and then to answer the, the second part of your question, yes, anything that is uh, street related, uh, the, the pavement, the, the sidewalks, um, uh, and um, um, trails uh, would be eligible. Like I said, as long as it's not development driven, uh, new development driven, uh, it, it would, uh, the, the guidelines actually do have a list of eligible uh, items, projects, so we can always go by that guideline to make sure the a project is gonna be eligible. Perfect, thank you. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? All right, take it out to public comment. Anybody on the phone? We're gonna bring back to council. Any motions? Direction? Move to approve. A motion, do we have a second? I'll second it myself, Monica. Roll call, council member Soto? Yes. Council member Moran? Yes. Council Member King? Mayor Pro Tem Garcia? Mayor Pro Tem Garcia? Mayor Aguilar? Yes. Motion approved by a vote of 4 0. Thank you. Uh, council direction on future agenda items? Anybody? Council? Yes. I'd um, I like to have or, or bring that item back in regards to the attorney evaluation for July 5th and hopefully we that it doesn't get canceled because it's too close to 4th of July. Um, uh, so, and then for that item, we should not need to have anybody else other than Tom or, you know, unless anybody else is on vacation, I mean, we should still be able to have that evaluation uh, for closed session. But that's it, thank you. Council, anything else? Okay, we're gonna go ahead and adjourn the meeting at 8.47 p.m., thank you.